Breakfast Show. Uh, my name is Richard Coughlin. This is my show. It's called The Walking Advert for Abortion. It's a nice neutral title. Don't like to go for anything too controversial. Tends to, de- tends to split the audiences otherwise. I get absolute nuts. It's like this man here. Look at this. Look at this guy here. You get, he looks quite angelic. He, he's, got, he's got a French word for stem and penises at home. We know this, don't, we know this to be true. We'll get, we'll get into it in the great detail. Don't worry. Okay, guys. So what I need you to do first is obviously there's not many of them. If you guys want to take a seat, do you think it's it? Do you not standing in the spotlight? Right, so okay. What I need you to do now is I need you to give me, give me on. I don't get me onto the stage. It's a kind of grandiose term for another part of the fucking floor, which is what <laughs> This is the off stage. This is me on stage. It's, the dynamics of this are fucking outstanding, right? But what I need you to do is to give me a big and It's my second to last show, so I need you to give it a full beat. We're all knackered. None of us want to be. Here. We're all shattered. Let's just get through it. It'll be like the blitz, okay? <laughs> You're not too sure now, are you? You're fucking. He's thinking about his fridge at the moment. I'm right? <laughs> just worried about that now. Don't worry, okay? All the men have crossed their legs. Right, okay, so what I'm going to do is introduce myself. So please give a round of applause and cheer and whoop as I bring on myself, Richard Coughlin! <laughs> Dreadful, worst display of anarchy ever. Welcome, this is, welcome to this. Uh, welcome to this room. Carry on chatting. It's fine. I don't mind. Right? It's, uh, this is this is the thing. This is the only comedy club you're going to come to. The East model on Joseph Pritzel's basement. Uh, <laughs> he wouldn't have had a comedian down there though. So let's consider ourselves a supporter. We don't know. We don't know the full details. He might not have been as big a monster as we did. I'm starting with the Joseph Pritzel jokes. It just goes downhill from here, folks. So, <laughs> I, I don't do as much highbrow stuff. Of that, as I, can, as I can assure you. But um, it's very nice to be here. So, who is Scottish? Give me a cheer. Yeah. Most of the room, that's good to see that these three shows have not done much to diminish the myth of the tight Scotsman. <laughs> if anything, it's perpetuated it. I'm, just, uh, I'm going home on Sunday. And in a way, I'm glad because I don't have to go through this. Fu- the flyering, fuck it. Oh, I, I don't fly, I, I've been good to you people this month. I haven't flyed one bastard since I've been here. And you're sick of them, aren't you? Every fucking. What is that? And, and I don't like flyering for the simple reason because no one's ever fucking heard of me. And so they always give me that, are you funny? Oh, for fuck's sake. You know what? <laughs> like, what do you do on a stripper? Have you got nice tits? I mean, you tell me. I'm a prostitute. What did your fanny taste like? You don't like this. <laughs> I stopped flying. The reason I didn't fly, fly this year is because last year I was flying, and I got so nuts up, right? I mean, so, I mean, a guy who obviously lived here all his life, right? I mean, a proper harm um, Scotland. I give it, I go to a comedy show, sir, and he just walks up and goes, Why does that one keep fucking hustling me? <laughs> so just, this guy doesn't know the Edinburgh Festival's on. He thinks there's a conspiracy out there, like, I mean, handing random bits of paper advertising random shows. I just imagine him going over and boarding his windows up going, fucking people are following it. <laughs> <laughs> I do love coming to Scotland though because every year you guys, uh, Scottish people, you raise the bar on what you can deep fat fry. You take it <laughs> to a level of absolute... I, I went into a takeaway two weeks ago. I, I, there was things on this menu that Jeffrey Dahmer wouldn't have fucking eaten, right? <laughs> The, the deep fat fryer came along. The Scottish people have just been distracted ever since. What is this fascination with you? Like, I'm a chair, my grandmother, everything, right? <laughs> <laughs> they were selling in this pit shop, they were selling bad and deep fat fried donkey bad meat pizza. <laughs> <laughs> There's a good hey! Did they have chocolate on it as well? <laughs> in case someone done a pop down. <laughs> Donna get back meat pizza. I wanted to eat one of these things, jump off a cliff and see what kills me first. That's the <laughs> only reason I can see buying one of these things. Who is English? Give me two of your English. Hey, hey, one Blair. Everyone's got all very quiet now. Oh god, we're surrounded. <laughs> Nobody mentioned Carden. Don't mention Carden. <laughs> Go panic burn. Oh yeah, you're fresh. Just get out of here. <laughs> Where are you from, mate? Where are you from? Wait. Leeds! No, oh, you're, you're, I, 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 I go to the Leeds a lot, I do support Leeds, you know. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I, it, 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 I support them mainly because it's a piss my dad off for any that's, <laughs> that's one of the main reasons you do support them. And the Yorkshire, Yorkshire men, very, 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 very interesting people. There's two types of Yorkshire men. There's like, well, you've got to look on bright side, and then the other one, which is just shite. That's basically <laughs> the two that you get. What, what, what would you classify? You seem like a bit of a perky uh, man, sir. Not in that way, I mean, I don't know you that well, but... <laughs> <laughs> I've done some 
get in your chair, you get the fucking shite crowd. And the dog is like, you know, oh god, how was the key? Well, it's all right if you like laughing, but you know, not for me, you know what I mean? <laughs> Drive frankly. <laughs> I'm going home to get some whippets and mushy peas, right? Because <laughs> that's how the athlete will do, right? <laughs> so we've got, we got him from us overseas in. Oh, yeah, then, so, that's sort of overseas, I mean, before that, and, uh, in between. What part of Ireland are you from? Sorry? Mayo. I didn't hear it. Mayo. 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 They said Mayo. 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 Wait, where the fuck's that? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> hey? West of London. West of London. Thank you for <laughs> <laughs> Everything technically is West of London, depending how far you go around the fucking world. I mean, <laughs> East London is West of London. I mean, it's a, a bit of a way you're facing. <laughs> So I, I do say that I'm British, I am English, but I say that I'm British, I think that then, people, you go down, I'm going to go back home after the festival, there's always ignorant English people, of which there are many, and I go down there, and they're like, oh, don't they all hate you up there, don't they all hate you, like, no, it's fucking nonsense, it's all made up, really, is it? if anything, it's kind of affectionate now, I mean, I think it's a kind of an affectionate rivalry we've got, it's just for the sake of it, we've got a little, we've even got a little nickname for each other, you know, the, the Irish are the Paddy, the Scots are the Jocks, the Welsh are the Taggies, and the English are cunts, and <laughs> <laughs> it's the way we like it. We're used to it that way. My name is Richard Cotton, by the way. It's nice to be here. I am known on the circuit as the David Beckham of stand-up comedy. Some of you are laughing about already. That wasn't a punchline, but I can understand what you fucking go about. I'll explain. It's a bit, it's a bit complicated. It's not because I'm good-looking and stylish, obviously, and it's not because I, I'm any good at football. The reason I'm called the David Beckham of stand-up is because everybody who's ever met my wife really wants to smack her in the fucking mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Football and wife beating in the first game. There we go. <laughs> no, it's a bit of a harsh way to start the show. I do realise. I don't want to. I don't want. I want to make it clear. I'm against wife, wife beating. Disgusts me. I, I'm, I'm, I'm totally against hitting women. I think it's wrong. You know, I, unless it's for fun. Then, you know, <laughs> and then just feel bad about it. Both of them are miserable. If you don't enjoy it, then at least one person's happy. I'm just I'm trying to make the world a better place. You're looking at me now, man, and you're going to fucking be wearing my bollocks and hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Women, you get patronised. The people who have your best interests at heart, they don't. They fucking make it bad for you. I'm a member of this. I'm a member of the charity Amnesty. Anyone? Anyone member of Amnesty here? No, who give a shit? Fuck them. Now, that's fair enough, right? I'm a member of Amnesty, right? And I, I, I'm not caught by one of these fucking chuggers, you know, the people that fucking pass it with the clipboards. It's, it's just a conspiracy to give lollipop ladies more work because you have to cross the road every fucking time you see one of them, right? <laughs> <laughs> They said, they said, what do you like to know about Amnesty? I'm like, well, what you, what, tell me what you do. And they, they did stop a load of things. One of the things Amnesty do is domestic violence. They don't do domestic violence. Um, <laughs> highly inappropriate for a peaceful organisation such as themselves. <laughs> one of the things they, they deal with domestic violence, and they gave me this statistic. They said, uh, they said did you know, sir, that uh, every, the average amount of times a woman has to be beaten before she phones the police is 34 times. And I thought, fuck it out. And I said, well, I better keep a tally going now. <laughs> These people have got no sense of fucking humour, right? They just... <laughs> they don't know what I'm doing. No, they don't know. They shouldn't be saying that. Say one. Well, I'll cut it down. I can cut it down. Let's say 34. They'll just be... You could be speaking to Johnny Wife Beater and just be skipping off home going, brilliant, yeah. Jack Daniels and a baseball bat. Right now. <laughs> Darling, make some excuses for your eyes. And there's another, there's another advert that I find very patronising towards women, and it's very misleading as well. There's one of these the drink responsibly adverts we have all the fucking time now. All these drink responsibly is important. If you wanted to be responsible, you wouldn't drink in the fucking first place. Right? This is a stupid fucking idea. And they've got, they, they, they give you this tip, they take, they're basically trying, it's a warning to women to say, be careful, you know, be careful if, you know, because some men uh, do not have your best interest in heart. Some men have got a very sinister agenda. And they start off with this woman, she's all leery and drunk and like, yeah, 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 bollocks, and they didn't put that in there, but, but I mean... <laughs> <laughs> but then they, 
then the voice goes very frail and she tells me a story, a story about a man who followed her home and did something horrible to her. And then they say, ladies, when you're drunk, you think you're invincible, when actually you're at your most vulnerable. And then they give you this statistic. They say, one out of every three women who are sexually assaulted are drunk when it happens. So be careful. And I thought, right, but... If one out of every three women who are sexually assaulted are drunk, that means statistically you're twice as likely to get raped when you're stone cold fucking phone doesn't it? I mean, <laughs> yeah, girls, it's the safest option. I mean, they're, 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 they're the odds aren't good either way. One out of three, two out of three. I mean, I don't want to be raped, but if I did, I'd rather be pissed, quite frankly. I don't have to deal with it until the morning. Then. It's the men who want to buy you a coffee. They're the fucking easy, evil bastards. <laughs> I was the one thing one thing I do get a lot of when you do stand up, you do get a lot of people, they ask you all the same questions, they always ask you about heckles. Heckles is the one thing everyone wants to know about heckles. And I, I've had two very interesting heckle experiences uh, this year. I was doing a good I was doing a gig in Clapham in, uh, in central London, guy in the front row, one of these guys who goes to comedy clubs just to fucking ruin it, some troll in the front row, right? And he's just, he was heckled, interrupting every joke, and I've got the fifth act on. And I lost my fucking temper with the guy after about five minutes. I just went, excuse me, mate, just shut the fuck up, right? And he looks at me and goes, no, right? Which wasn't very constructive. I should have seen that coming, given his agenda, right? But I say he looked at me, he didn't really look at me. I was sort of there. He looked off over there and sort of talking to me over there. And I thought, this is the... For a minute, I thought... Do you know when you was at school? Everyone at school, and usually a supply teacher, right? And one, there's a teacher with one of those funny fucking eyes. You know those eyes that just sort of go off the other side a bit like that? And the, it freaks you, you fucking shit yourself because they fucking tell you off and you forget which eye to line up with. And you try and, you'd line up with the wrong eye, so he'd spin your head and you'd end up just circling the bastard. You know? <laughs> Put a patch over in your bastard, help us out, right? And, but I think this guy had two eyes like that. I think it's beggar's fucking logic. He can't fucking, this can't be serious. So I, I, I just said to him, why won't you look at me? And he goes, I'm blind. <laughs> it changes the tension in the room, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, I, mean, I, I was like, what? Proper blind. Like, <laughs> as opposed to that non-proper blindness, you know, <laughs> the one where you can see. Right? <laughs> I said, what? Proper blind? He goes, yeah, I'm blind, I can't see anything. I'm like, well, I don't want to be rude or anything, mate, but... If you're blind, why are you sitting in the front row? There's people at the back struggling to fucking see you. <laughs> you're getting nothing out of being sat there. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's like you, you, you're supposed to have good hearing. You could have stayed in the foyer. You're thinking just as fucking well and not paid to come in. <laughs> and the people were like you. They were like laughing, but a lot of them were like, oh, not sure. He's handy. Oh, fuck it. He's disabled and he's a cunt. That's worse than being an able-bodied cunt, right? <laughs> You give crippled people a bit more leeway before you fucking let them piss you off that badly, right? <laughs> oh, that, that was my fault with Medley. I'm doing this, I'll give you another one. This one wasn't my fault. I was doing this gig in Derry, in, in, in Northern Ireland. And I was looking forward to it, actually. And I was, the reason I was looking forward to it is my granddad came from Derry. And um, he was very, I love my granddad. He's, he's dead now, but he's a very cynical sense of humour, right? And, and he, he was, uh, I was in London on the day of the 7th of July terrorist attack, which was the 7th of July, obviously. And, <laughs> <laughs> and he, uh, he rings me up, he didn't do nothing during the day, so he rings me up and he goes, what's going on down there, Richard? I'm like, oh, it's terrible, Granddad, there's all these bombs going off, these terrorist attacks. He goes, Jesus Christ, terrorist glory of London, how fucking 1980s is that? <laughs> <laughs> the Irish real blood in London up before it's fucking cool, I'll have you know, before these Muslims came along. And you, you English used to do jokes about the Irish being stupid, we might have been stupid, at least we worked out we had to move away from the fucking bomb before it went off. <laughs> <laughs> he was a little bit racist, but you know, like I said, he did, so it doesn't matter. Right? So, uh, I walked on stage in this gig in Derry, and uh, I basically uh, walked on stage as I am now, half man, half fiber refill. And <laughs> walked on stage, have you got the microphone, and this little bastard in the front row is going, Excuse me! In that sort of understated Northern Irish accent that sounds like a cross between a leprechaun and a rape alarm, basically. Right? <laughs> And he's going, excuse me, like yesterday, he goes, are you gay? <laughs> you know, he's got to do blick for a month, you know? And he's like, oh, I, 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 I didn't say yes or no, 
know, there's no point in engaging him a bit, but I thought I'd fucking humour him a bit, give him a bit of spill, maybe I can get something out of this. It's honestly 100% true what happened. I said, why do you think I'm gay? And he looks at me and goes, because you look like you've got AIDS! <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to laugh, it's true, that's why you're laughing. He's a, you're going, oh yeah! <laughs> he does, <knows> doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm <laughs> And I'm fucked at this point, I don't know what to say back to that. As my quick tonight as a comedian, I'm fucking knackered, right? I don't know what to say, I'm stumped. And about 20 seconds of complete silence goes by, and I'm fucking terrified. And I look down at this guy, and he's just laughing, going, <laughs> This lot's back in his mouth. <laughs> 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 yeah, here goes. I don't know if I've got AIDS, but in six weeks' time, your doctor will tell you. Can you <laughs> can you email me? I'd be curious to know myself, right? <laughs> <laughs> the guy, the, to be fair to the guy, he did have a point. I do look like I'm dying. This is just my <laughs> This is just my look, but I'm rocking, right? This is how I roll, right? And, um, and it, it, there's nothing wrong with me, don't worry, I haven't won a competition of being in tonight or nothing, I'm a legitimate comedian, right? And, and, but I do, I do look ill all the fucking time, right? And, I, and it's going to catch on, it's going to catch on, because we've had all the looks, we had the slim look, then we had the skinny look, then we had the size zero, and I'm the next level down, it's called terminal, right? This is, I call it chemo chic, right? It's going to catch on, don't worry, right? My mates used to take the piss out of me and laugh at me, and that was until two years ago, when we went on holiday to Disneyland, I shaved my head and got in for Fuck all. Who was that? Did you find it was me? Yes. But I do look, I do look like a meal all the fucking time. This is just, this is just, I'm, one of the, I'm, I'm not healthy. I'm nothing wrong with me. It hasn't been diagnosed anyway. But I'm, 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 I'm not healthy. But only one thing is I do smoke. Eat smoke, is in. Yeah, it's quite a few of us are still going, guys. <laughs> Keep the faith. Right, I'm doing this. I've got the, I, I smoke 800 million cigarettes a day, and I don't care. And one thing I don't like about smoking these days is the warning labels are getting a tad aggressive. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fonts getting bigger, text is getting bolder. I walked back in cigarettes the other day, the warning label just said, You are a cunt. That's all it said. <laughs> and then I turned it over, and there was a picture of my mum crying next to a tombstone. I thought, <laughs> <laughs> the only reason we have warning labels on cigarettes is uh, because of Americans. We've got the Americans in? Yeah. yeah. Hey, oh, you've got some Americans. Where are you from, guys? New York. You're from New York? I'm going to, I'm going to New Jersey, which is near there. In a, I'm, actually, I'm actually going to Newark in, a, in a couple, about a week's time, and I wasn't looking forward to it until I realised that Newark is an anagram of wanker. And then I realised, <laughs> yeah, you never thought of it, see? Genius. <laughs> The Guardian did really say that, but um, that was a <laughs> quote from someone else's show. But I mean, I'm just, uh, but no, so it's good to have you here. Um, I'll get on to you later, right? Now, <laughs> there's an American in the room. Everyone relax. <laughs> but no, I mean, it's good for you guys. Occasionally, America and common sense go, like that. That's why we need to have warnings on cigarette packets, because they didn't know that breathing in lungfuls of carcinogenic smoke might make you feel bad in the long run. You couldn't do that of anything else. I mean, I couldn't do a toaster company on the grounds that the warning label was not there to tell me not to put my penis in after it had been turned on. <laughs> Because it might sting in the morning. Right? I mean, I don't know. None of this spoke about, but you can do it with cigarette packets, and that's the only reason we've got more. But we live in, the, the, the world we live in today is so litigious, and you can sue for any fucking thing. You can sue anyone for anything, right? You know, we've got all these adverts on TV like Claims Direct, and it, my favourite one, have you seen the Injury Lawyers for You advert? What I love about these companies is their selling points are not selling points. These are not things you should be offering, right? The Injury Lawyers for you, right, their selling point is they're real lawyers. But of course they fucking are. I don't want to go to court and have a fucking ice cream van pull up at <laughs> And the other one, the other one, uh, Claims Direct, they all do this in all fairness, but Claims Direct do this fucking one where they go, they go, uh, they go, we work on a no win, no fee policy. Well, of course you should. If you don't win, you haven't done your job. I shouldn't pay you not to do your job. If I go to a restaurant, they don't sell it to me on the street that we work on a no food, no fee policy here. <laughs> if you don't eat anything, you don't have to pay. Well, it's a fucking bargain that, innit, right? <laughs> but that's 
Suddenly we've got the warning labels on the cigarette packets, and but the thing is, that's the world. That's the world we live in now, where you can sue for anything. And eventually, these things are not going to be worth it. Not going to be worth putting them on it. Because you've got the ones like this. You can see it quite clearly. It says there: smoking kills, smoking kills, smoking kills, smoking kills. You smoke and you die. Right? Fair enough. Right? But what if? What if it doesn't kill me? What if I go to the doctors tomorrow, he tells me I've got some conditions, some disorders, some disease, and I'll be dead within about two months, and I would have got it regardless of whether I smoked or not. Now, at that point, I should have the right to sue the tobacco company under the Trades Descriptions Act for selling me a product that didn't do what it specifically said it was going to do. Yeah, I want a bit other than, I want to see that headline, Man Sues Tobacco Company for Not Getting Cancer. <laughs> these things are all my fucking money's worth, right? <laughs> Fifteen years, I even got a fucking wheeze, right? I ran the London Marathon last week and won it. What the fuck is this bullshit, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, and, and one of the things, yeah, one of the problems when you do look uh, ill all the time, like I do, um, I, I don't have much luck with women. I am single. Um, I am single, uh, and it, it's, it's, in a way it's a good thing, because uh, I can't take a health certificate with me every time I go out on the pool, and I, so I don't fucking bother anymore, I can't be asked with it, and as a result I don't tend to do well with women, but at the same time, I, you know, if a woman does take a bit of interest in me, I'm just a bit suspicious of her, quite frankly, right, I just, I just figure she's looking at me and going, well he looks like he's got what I've got, so fuck it, why not? And, uh, <laughs> You shouldn't have that prejudiced, judgmental attitude, quite frankly, right? But, you know, and it, it's a good thing that I'm single, because it spares me a lot of fucking hassle. Um, I, there's several things and problems I've got, one of which is I'm shit in bed. Um, <laughs> this wasn't my tactic. I didn't take a microphone and a spotlight and announce this before I started, right? This is not my normal fucking set of attack. Um, but I, I am shit in bed. I mean, it's, a, I do, I do, I, it's called premature ejaculation. It's prehistoric in case it's <laughs> But, honestly, it got so bad, I've started to come two shags in advance, right? I mean, there's, there's women in this audience who are disappointed and you don't even know it yet, right? No. <laughs> but, you know, it's got pretty bad. And what, what I don't like about it is, I mean, it's, it's a bit better now, I have to be honest. I mean, about, I had to sort it out about a year ago, because I was masturbating and I came so quickly I apologised to myself as a reflex. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and everyone else in the swimming pool, obviously, they had to be. Um, Compensated and had to pay you off the fucking pool refill. Chlorine doesn't kill semen, did you know that? You do now, right? And, uh, <laughs> and so, and the thing I like about premature ejaculation is it's always my fucking problem. The onus is always on me. There's no fucking, there's no sort of compromise with it. You know, every woman who can, it's the same fucking thing. It's like, why can't you just slow down? I'm like, bollocks, why don't you speed up? Let's meet halfway on this fucking <laughs> operation. Because, uh, ladies, if I ask you, when the queen in the audience, if you could come after three seconds, would you fucking stop yourselves? No! Right? Well, so don't persecute me, because I'm more highly evolved than you. Let's just fucking... <laughs> You see, you're getting angry, right? Now. <laughs> you don't want a temperature, the monitor. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, at the end of this show, you'll have a shaved head, you'll be a lesbian, right? Don't worry. <laughs> but no, it's, uh, it, 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 it is pretty bad. But, uh, and uh, and the, the other reason is, um, uh, the other problem I've got is uh, uh, I do have a um, relatively small penis. I mean, um, again, don't normally announce this. I, think, uh, the, I wonder why I don't pull off the gigs, right? You know, but, I, know, it's, I say small, I mean it works, everything's there, but it's, it's, uh, it's nothing to write home about. Um, not that you would really, I mean it's a weird letter to send to home, is it? Oh, yeah, dear mum, I have a big cock, I love Richard, that's a bit of a weird fucking letter to send, quite frankly, right? But it all, it all works, everything's fine, it's all good, but um, you know, I've always said that in many ways the world would be a better place if all men had small penises. A lot of the women I tend to lose you on this fucking uh, issue, but let me sort of go, because most men who brag about the size of their dicks are liars, we know this, but every now and again one of them isn't, and they're the most annoying bastards you've ever met in your life. You all fucking know, everybody's got one mate who's fucking got this enormous wanger that he just needs to drop of a hat to fucking just whip it out in any fucking scenario and swing it around and fucking dance on the table and rub it in your fucking face and give you fucking in-depth lectures with fucking blue on the length of bread, it's fucking massive, right? My dick's fucking huge. Look at the outline there, right? I fucking, me as mate, it's fucking massive. That's just it on the flop. Imagine, I fucking get huge, right? Let me fucking, last night I used a Pringle tube for a condom, right? It's fucking, it's fucking massive. 
massive one. Let me tell you how big, <laughs> let me tell you how big it is, right? It's my dick is 18 inches long and it's 15 inches round. I'm like, yes, that's a newborn baby. When did you last see a woman enjoy every one of them pulled out of her, right? <laughs> I haven't seen it and I've got Google, right? <laughs> Doesn't exist. Rule 34. Right, now. Uh, I, I do spend a lot of, because of this, I mean, you, you can't take life too seriously, and some men do take things like that far too seriously. I had a mate called Terry. Every bloke in here has got a mate who's like Terry, in that he takes masturbation a tad too seriously, right? He put a little bit too much effort into it, do you know what I mean? I mean, if you're sat there thinking, I haven't got that mate, it's because it's you, right? <laughs> I've got this mate Terry and he's like that and Jesus Christ every fucking time. He invents new ways of doing it and he comes up with fucking new things. He comes running up to me one day, just a couple of years ago. He comes running up to me and he goes, he goes, Rich, Rich, what hand do you wank with? Now, that, who starts a fucking conversation like that? <laughs> what hand do you wank with? And I say, well, I'm right hand. He went, right. Figured this out last night. Next time you have an wank, don't use your right hand, use your left hand. I said, why? He said, because it feels like a woman's doing it. Right? And you get some, some of you are laughing there at that, but he's absolutely right, because I did it that night and it was fucking shit. <laughs> 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 We'll be married by next week, won't we? <laughs> but you know, so because of that, I did mention, uh, I did mention, I, I, I've got you know, Google earlier. I do spend a lot of time online. I mean, I had, well, I said single. Right? I do spend a lot of time on the internet. People think the internet has dumbed society down. It hasn't. That's bollocks. It, the internet hasn't made people more stupid. The internet has just made a lot more stupid people much more easily accessible. Right? <laughs> any, any nutter with half a pineapple for a brain and a fucking opinion. They can get themselves a blog, or a Twitter, or a MySpace page, and I've got a YouTube channel. Hello! Right, well, I've, I've got a YouTube channel, and fucking, I, I fucking love, I'm like a mecca for nutters on this fucking website, right? They just gravitate towards me. I'm having this fucking... About a year ago, I posted this video about homophobia, about how stupid it was. It was a video called Homophobia is Retarded, right? <laughs> Pretty straightforward fucking... You know, I got this... And what happened was, I got this comment posted on one of my videos by a guy called The Fag Punisher. Now, <laughs> who logs into a website under the name The Fag Punisher, right? That's like the one superhero Marvel Comics didn't want to touch. That fucking, didn't they? <laughs> The Fag Punisher, right? Now, the Fag Punisher, he's, he posted this comment to me, and it was fucking stupid. This was his argument as to why homosexuality was wrong. First thing, the first thing he said to me was, he goes, he goes, Richard, you might support homosexuality. And he's like, I don't support homosexuality. You don't support homosexuality. It's not like a football team. It's not homosexuality <laughs> athletic or something. Right? When I see two gay guys walking down the street, I don't go, woohoo, yeah! Easy, easy, easy. You don't do that support them. It happens, I don't care. It's not the opposite of support, if anything, right? And so and he goes, you might support homosexuality, but remember this. You were born out of your mum's vagina, not your dad's arsehole. <laughs> factually accurate statement as far as I'm aware. I was, I was there at the time, I don't remember it, but I'm pretty sure if I was born out of my mum's vagina, I'd have fucking heard about it by now. <laughs> <laughs> what I love about it though is it's not the fact that he said that statement, it's the fact that he felt the need to preface it with the words, remember this, just in case, right? Because you don't want to have that slip in your mind. It's a vital piece of information that could come in handy at any specific... You're laughing now, fuck it, right? You could be on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire one day, the million pound question comes up, you use your 50-50, right? And Chris Tarrant is there going, were you born out of A, your mum's vagina, or B, your dad's arsehole? And you'll be going, fuck, fuck, what did the fag punisher tell me? Chris, can I phone the fag punisher, please? You're gonna phone a friend, it's the fag punisher, no. <laughs> nutters, right? Nutters, right? But a bigger nutter. I had a bigger nutter a couple of weeks after that. 
this big, again, great usernames, this nutter, his username was the Holocaust Denier 6124. <laughs> now, why, the reason I love that username is that meant he had to go through 6,123 different versions before he, he settled on that one, for fuck's sake. I'm not that committed to denying anything, quite frankly, right? But he, he posted this, but we actually had a bit of a back and forth of each other, a little bit of a fucking interaction. And he said to me, look, Richard, just because society is more accepting of homosexuality, just because society has deemed that it's okay, does not mean it's morally and objectively uh, 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 correct. I mean, that's very true. But what is your argument? And he goes, well, if society deemed that it was okay for me to have sex with a child, that wouldn't be okay. And I'm like, yes, but the problem is with that argument, mate, is society has already deemed that it's not okay for you to have sex with a child. So you can't. He goes, yes, but if they did, no, no, but, but they haven't, right? They, they haven't. Right? Yes, but if they did, no, you fucking arsehole. Look, the, the brick wall of logic has been placed up here, stop headbutting it and come up with a better fucking argument. So he stopped <laughs> for about five minutes, obviously thinking away, and he came back to me with what could be the single greatest question I have ever been asked in my life. He goes, okay, what if my dog consented to have sex with me? <laughs> now this was a text conversation, I still wrote pun, right? You can't make that many typing errors in one fucking sentence, can you? But no, he, he repeated it, he went, he went, what if what if my dog consented to have sex with me? And I said, well, apart from anything else, mate, ultimately that would mean that you have got a fucking talking dog. <laughs> More to the point, what are you doing asking it? That's a bit chivalrous for a dog fucker, isn't it? That's a, do you make a sitcom out of it, put it on eBay, don't fucking shag it, right? You know? <laughs> Who would have guessed it spoke English as well, fluently, it's amazing, right? But the, the sort of nutters I don't like arguing with on the internet, the, the ones that bore me are nationalists, because they just fucking, they, they end up refuting themselves, you just have to let them talk and they'll fucking stumble up on their own words, or they'll just say something so stupid. I was talking to this guy recently about um, the subject of immigration, and he said to me, he said, well you've got to understand Richard, is the problems that immigration brings, such as the housing crisis, homelessness, the unemployment, the disease, and the flooding. Well, the, the flooding? When did we start blaming the immigrants on the fucking flooding? I mean, is that the next? B, is that the BNP's next line of attack? I mean, you know, ladies and gentlemen, there are so many immigrants in Britain. It's starting to fucking sink. Time for action. <laughs> Those floods in Gloucestershire in 2007. That was the Romanian sweats that they bring over. It's, it's fucking ridiculous, right? We always miss the point. And I don't get nationalism in the basis that I don't understand why you would be proud of simply being born somewhere. It doesn't make... And, uh, you know, you fell out of your mum. What do you want, a fucking biscuit? I mean, it's, a, it's, it's not an achievement in my side. I think you should be proud of your achievements, not things that are just arbitrary facts about yourself. But the, the most nationalistic and proud people always live in the shittiest, most fucking run-down, fucking burnt-out, fucking Beirut-style crap holes you've ever seen. They, they're the shit... They, they stay, they're these guys who've got that fucking... Uh, all these scars on their face, they've got no teeth, and the one they've got is gold, and they've got all these knife marks on their face, they've got a map of the London Underground carved in their fucking face, basically. And they've got this, they've got 27 different women's names tattooed on their bodies in various places. Not not good tattoos, right? Not like this shit, right? But no, they've got but shit tattoos. Ones that look like they've been done with a compass dipped in a pot of ink, done by a one-eyed piss blind pirate on the back of a 2CV driving over a gravel pit, right? <laughs> And he fucking stands there in his council estate, his wife's behind him, he never loved her in the first place. He just fucking married to her, she's let herself go, she weighs 350 fucking pounds. She's got, a, she's got the leggings on with an arse that looks like two hunchbacks arm wrestling on top of a rhino, right? He's got 17 different fucking kids, none of them are his, they're all different colours, none of them have got Manuel and Joaquin over here, he doesn't, he doesn't pay attention to it. He looks out on his council estate, 90% of it's on fire, and he's got more kitchen appliances in his garden than he's got in his kitchen for some fucking reason. And he just stands there and goes, oh, I love this country. Why? He clearly hates you. <laughs> it's... It's... I fucking, I fucking, I don't get... And they have a go at him 
immigrants, right? They've got illegal immigrants going, they're not from this country, I'm, I'm British and I'm proud. You fucking, you were born here, mate. This guy arrived here this morning, fucking gaffer taped to the underside of a Eurostar with a nail for his cock. I think he's had a bit more. <laughs> But we always miss the point with shit like that, don't we? We always miss the point. It's like, you, 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 there was a story on the front page of the Sun newspaper uh, a couple of years ago. It's quite a few years ago, actually. There was these pictures of these two illegal immigrants walking out of the sea at Dover. Walking out of the sea. Now, what had happened? Five days previous to this picture being taken, these two guys, they were from Afghanistan. Their house had been burned to rat shit. All their family and friends had been killed. Their village was destroyed. All their possessions, their house, everything. All they had on them were the clothes they were wearing and whatever money and things they had in their pockets. So they decide to flee. So they get out of the fucking country, they manage to get to the south of France and using whatever money they could, using whatever illegal means they could, getting smuggled in vans and lorries and underneath cars, they manage to get all the way up to Calais. At this point they've been going four days, they've had no food, no drink, no sleep and they're fucked. They've lost everything and they've got nothing left in life to live for but they're still going. And they decide they can't stay in France, all they're going to have to do is we're going to have to cross the channel. Uh, they decided to swim across the fucking English Channel, right? <laughs> now, the, 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 the sun said they used a homemade raft, but these guys didn't have a home, so that's a complete misnomer, right? <laughs> Uh, it wasn't even a raft, it was half a fucking deflated space opera with a 2 by 4 glue to it. <laughs> fucking matchstick wrapped in bubble wrap, right? And they hung on to this fucking thing that they clobbered together and swam with their fucking arms across the fucking channel, the busiest shipping lane in the world. 25 miles avoiding P&O ferries, freights, Richard Branson, and they went there. 17 hours later, having not stopped, imagine how they felt, and they just collapsed on the shores at Dover. Someone takes their picture and it's in the paper. And every British person, every British person who read that fucking article did the same thing. They read it, looked up and said, you see, it's too easy to get in this country nowadays. <laughs> That's a fucking Japanese game show waiting to happen. That's not a fucking. <laughs> but we do always miss the point, and we love moaning about shit that really is not. The... And you hear this one a lot nowadays. The one you hear a lot nowadays is people moaning about prison. Oh, life in prison. Oh, it's so fucking good. It isn't like they've got it too good in prison. That's the problem. It. Oh, fucking good. These people aren't queuing up to fucking get in there. Right? I wouldn't want to go. But they go on about prison being. Like... There was a story on Sky News a week before the festival started, right? There was a story on Sky News, and this was delivered, they were delivering this as bad news, right? Imagine this. They said, a recent survey of British prisons has discovered that life inside is so good that more than 90% of the inmates don't even want to try and escape. <laughs> good! I mean, that's a good thing, isn't it? I'm not missing the fucking label here, right? I don't want people in prison trying to fucking escape. I think you'll find most people who've escaped from prison wanted to. You don't do it by accident, right? You know, I don't want them. If we can cut it off at that point, all the better. If it means giving them a few fringe benefits, so be it. I don't want to come across as some lily-livered, limp-wristed, liberal, liberal left-wing lunatic. All I'm saying is, if it lessens the chances of me getting skinned alive and bummed on the way home, <laughs> I'd rather give Peter Sutcliffe an Xbox. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'll pay for it my fucking self as well, I don't care, right? It's, 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 but, but people just love complaining about shit, and we love making celebrities out of these people. There's a, the, 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 there's a guy in this country, you may have heard, if you're from, the people from abroad I'll explain, there's a guy in this country called Ian Huntley, right? Now, for the people... Oh, 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 oh. Oh, you're gonna get fucking sensitive now, are you? <laughs> You've got to AIDS, wife beating, cancer, fucking you know, the Holocaust, everything fucking else, and now we're gonna start getting sensitive about it, right? Look, don't fucking ooh and ah, you're from Yorkshire, right? <laughs> I don't know what that means as an argument, but it makes sense to me, okay? <laughs> It's like, just like, your mum, right, fucking whatever. <laughs> Ian Huntley, now Ian Huntley, for the people who forgot, Ian Huntley was a guy who about nine, ten years ago, he kidnapped, he kidnapped and murdered these two girls who were eight years old, and now he's in prison for life. I saw that story and thought, there's a comedy routine in that, right? <laughs> come on, don't bottle out now, right? And we've come this far, let's not fall out now, okay? But no, the, the, and Ian Huntley is a bit like the, he's a bit like the paedophile version of Princess Diana, is the best way. It, it, 
what I mean by that is like every excuse to put Ian Huntley in the fucking news, they'll do it. Doesn't matter what it's for, they'll put him in the news. My favourite headline from a newspaper in 2008 was this headline in the Daily Telegraph. One of these news articles with no fucking news in it, right? You learn nothing from it. And it, what it got, the headline was this, Ian Huntley is planning on joining Islam. <laughs> so fucking bastardy what? I mean, what, the, what good does it do either of them, quite frankly? Not, they were pitching it like Darth Vader and Sauron are uniting as one. They're like, they like the mighty morphing pedo rangers. <laughs> So what? He's probably just fucking bored. I can't. Ian Huntley killed two young girls. That's enough information. You can't demonise a man like that. I can't believe anyone read that article and went, Ian Huntley's joining his Well, but he's gone too far now, right? I'm sending back my fan club membership right now. Killing two young girls. We've all done it Friday night. A bit pissed, but I never joined Islam. It's fucking ridiculous, right? And there's a, who is on Facebook? Yeah. There's a few of you on Facebook, you probably know about Facebook, you know, but the thing about Facebook that fucking gets on my nerves is this thing, Facebook groups, Facebook groups get me, they piss me off so fucking, every day I get invited to some fucking facile fucking collection of people, join this group if you like chocolate and breathing, and fucking I was the, <laughs> it's fucking nonsense, if you hated Hitler, join this group, I mean Jesus Christ, and there's a, but there's a Facebook group, they're basically, Facebook groups are activism for people with ME, if you want to save the planet, but you can't be bothered quite frankly, you just make a Facebook group and live in the fucking illusion that you're doing something worthwhile, right? And there's this Facebook group about Ian Huntley, right? And you might have seen this, it actually genuinely exists. It's called Get Ian Huntley Off of Facebook. <laughs> I'm not making this up, has anyone seen it? If the fucking type in, it's got like over a million members. It's called Get Ian Huntley Off of Facebook. Now, this person claims that Ian Huntley has got a fucking Facebook account, right? Now, Okay, they don't offer any evidence for this, but we get to lead Chapido, so who gives a fuck about that, right? <laughs> but they fucking, they, they, they give this, Ian Huntley is not on Facebook, right? I mean, he's mental, he's not stupid, I mean, no, he might have, I don't even know if he's got internet access, right? But I hardly think if he did, he's going to go, do you know what, I'm going to join Facebook and get in touch with all my old school friends, they won't believe what I've been up to. <laughs> Like his mates are going to go, oh hello Ian, fucking hell mate, you're in this shit, aren't you? <laughs> Poke Ian, there you go, Ian. <laughs> One in the ribs for you there, mate, don't worry. Send file with cooked in a cake for Ian or something like that. I mean, he's not on fire, and even if he is, so what? He's in prison for life. If your kid's talking to Ian Huntley on the internet, that's the safest child online right now. It's the fucking pervert down the road with the tweed jacket and a fucking dog collar on. You want to be fucking suspicious of <laughs> But you know, you, you, we, we, we get fucking upset about these things. And I was talking about, uh, when I was talking about na uh, nationalists earlier, and I was talking about heckles as well, and um, I, I'm very proud of the fact that uh, I have done an Iraq war joke. Uh, never did an Iraq war joke, or a George Bush joke, because George Bush just made satire too yeah. fucking easy, quite frankly. <laughs> every wank of eight years I have to go to comedy clubs and watch every fucking smug bastard walk on stage and go, George Bush said this today, no, 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 is a clear cut, right? That's all I've like, <laughs> For eight years, and now you've got, but now you've made it, you've gone too far, you've got Obama now, and fucking liberal audiences don't laugh at jokes about black people, right? <laughs> Not from someone like me, I'm the whitest man of the world, right? Did you vote for Obama? Yeah. You did? Yeah! That's what you did. Right. Any American response? All right! Yeah! <laughs> Fucking like, no, the, 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 when are you going to do in America what everyone else in the world, and I'm sure in this room wants, and elect the president that we all want, which is Arnold? We all want Arnold! We all want Arnold! He can't do it because he wasn't born in the country. Neither was John McCain, quite frankly, but. <laughs> He wasn't, he was born in Panama. He's a Panamaniac, whatever the fuck they call it. 
Why would anyone vote for John McCain? Do you follow the American elections, right? Who the fuck would vote for John? John McCain only had three things that Obama didn't, and that was senility, skin cancer, and not very long to live. Those are not, <laughs> those are not things that should be a basis for voting for a president. Right? But get Arnold then. Get Arnold. We vote Arnold because he's fucking brilliant. He didn't, I, he's the governor of California. Can you imagine working at that office building, right? I don't care how stiff you are as a politician. Every time he comes in with a fucking... Could you follow this report for me? The Terminator! He's a fucking <laughs> Terminator! The fucking Terminator! I mean, you should go and get him a coffee, bro! <laughs> Every time he walked past, <laughs> you would spend a whole day going, don't say I'll be back, don't say I'll be back, don't say I'll be back. <laughs> Arnold Trump, the reason I love Arnold Schwarzenegger as a politician is he was a. Uh, he was being, uh, he, before he got elected, there was this big fucking scandal breaking of him allegedly, you know, sexually harassing uh, women or groping women in the gym and having threesomes in the toilet and smoking drugs. And of course, in America, it's like, how dare he have fun in his younger life, right? So, we'll <laughs> bury this bastard, right? So, they call this massive press conference, right? This is before the election, they, 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 they elected him as governor, and they call this massive press conference, and they get up, the, all the press are there, and Arnold just walks out. And they go, Mr. Schwarzenegger, what do you make of these damning, damning allegations of sexual harassment in your younger days? And Arnold goes, yes, it's true, I love to touch the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I can't argue with that, I can't. All the press went, fuck, Brexit. I see a booby, I love to be. Can't argue with me, right? Oh, God. Get, 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 take that back. Say, Britain has told you, right? Go back, right? We invented America. Now, it's not our land, but we have worked out. You can give it all this. <laughs> But yeah, um, what's, uh, the one thing I did love about the American election was when, when it looked like Obama was going to win, uh, there suddenly became this big thing in the press, this paranoia, and they kept asking this same fucking stupid question. They're going, is America ready for a black president? Is America ready for, are we, are we in America ready for a black president? And we're like, we don't know, you've never fucking had one. I mean, you've had 43 <laughs> white blokes in a row. That's not the basis for us to know whether you're ready for a black president. America isn't a country that should have asked itself if it's ready for a black president. Now, Zimbabwe, that was a guy who asked itself if it's ready for a black president. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, I, I, I was talking about this guy, so I was talking about, uh, I was talking about this guy at the bar, and uh, this, I was doing this gig, uh, and I just mentioned, I, mean, I didn't do a joke about the Iraq war. This guy was one of these people, you know, wasn't really interested in the fucking gig. He overdosed on a bit too much some newspaper, to be fucking honest with you. And I was talking to this woman, I can't even remember what the fucking conversation was, but I just said, I said the words Iraq war at some point, and this bloke fucking just stands up, something in his brain went, uh, and I think the meth kicked in or something, right? And he, he stands up and he hears me say that and he goes, Oi! Oi! Don't do jokes about that! Don't do jokes about that! It's not fucking funny! I said, I oh, did the same thing. He went, no! Don't fucking do jokes about that, mate! It's not fucking funny! I said, I didn't mention it, we were just, no! <laughs> Let me tell you something, mate! Let me tell you something, pal! Right? Right now! Right now in Iraq! British people, British soldiers, British soldiers are fighting and dying. British soldiers are laying down their lives so people like you can have privileges like freedom of speech. So shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I've been accused. I'm going I'm to leave you now, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to leave you with a story. Have you enjoyed yourself? Yeah. Of course you have, right? I mean, I'm going to leave you with a story because I have been accused many times of being uh, a bigot. I've been accused of being a racist and a misogyny. Some people have just said I'm downright ignorant, and I'm not ignorant at all. I don't even know what that word means, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're the first audience who's really got that. Some, some people don't, right? but I, I, I believe.
believe in equality. I do genuinely believe in equality. I think we're, you know, and particularly when it comes to gender, because I do realise, uh, you know, ladies in the audience, I do, you know, I'm not going to apologise, but I do realise I do a lot of jokes about women. And it, you know, I don't mean it as, as, as a harm, so don't please take it that way. It is a joke, right? At the end, most of it's true. But it, it's, a, it's a joke at the end of the day. And I do believe, but I do believe ultimately in equality. I think women are equal to men. You, girls, you are as pissed up and useless and fucking irresponsible and stupid as we fucking are, right? <laughs> We're as bad as each other, is the way I like to look at equality, right? And the thing is, most men, and men, get, men get accused, if I was to ask the ladies in the audience, if I was to ask you, you madam, obviously I'll ask you, right? What, what do men think about more than anything else in the world? What's, what's on men's minds the most? Sex. Sex, sex, you think. Because men think about sex, because men are disgusting, filthy, perverted, perverted, disgusting, filthy, filthy, perverted, disgusting, perverted, filthy, perverted, so disgusting, perverted, filth, right? That's what you say. And not to put words in your mouth, right? But, uh, but no, the, 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 that's, no, we are, we are, well, that's fair enough, right? We are, but we're, we're allowed to be, we're expected to be, we sort of let, you know, our filth flow on a daily basis. If you're a woman and you're here with your boyfriend or your husband, if you ever walk down the street and you see a woman who's reasonably attractive walk past and his head turns like that, and forth, in that split second he's done her every which way but loose in his mind, so <laughs> you can't do anything about it, right? As long as it stays there, right? That's okay. Right? But no, so, but women, you, you can't have this, right? you don't have this privilege, you're, you're, you've got these pressures on society, you know, and I'm looking, I'm looking at you, madam, you, madam, you've got this sort of, you've got this sort of aura to you, you're like a primary school teacher, you know, <laughs> I know Deep down inside you, there's this big deep slut waiting for you. So you can grind this poor fucker down. Um, so there's a grease spot on the mattress, quite frankly, right? It's not your brother, is it? I haven't just. I mean, yeah, that's your brother over there. Either way, they're both handsome men. You're too discerning, is your problem, right? I think in the bedroom, women just fucking explode with the t- <laughs> and they fucking freak you out sometimes. I was going, I'll tell you a story to demonstrate this. Uh, about ten years ago, I was going out with this girl. I know it sounds fucking ridiculous, but run with me on that, is the truth, right? About ten years ago, I was 19 years old, I was going out with this girl, and she asked me this question. She said, Richard, next time we're having sex, stop laughing. Right? Push me off. <laughs> No, she, she, said, she said to me, Richard, next time... Calm down. Just put it right? No consideration. Come to a comment show and laugh. But no, um... Uh, yeah, she, uh, she, uh, ten years ago, I was going out with this girl, and she asked me this question. She said, Richard, next time we're having sex, would you mind sticking your fingers up my ass? <laughs> It's a weird question to get asked at your man's funeral. I was giving the eulogy at the time as well. I said, what do you really want it? <laughs> Apart from not being dead, obviously. <laughs> but no, I thought, I thought, I'll give it a go. I'll you know, what's the worst that could happen, right? And, um, that fucking soon bit me on the ass, that question. Right? <laughs> I'll show you what happened, right? Because some of the men here might not be familiar with this, right? It's not something that everyone's done. I'll walk you through it, right? Now, when we say fingers up the arse, we don't just, I don't mean as one, as a collective noun, just take a running jump off the sofa and poof. <laughs> Just don't, don't do it, you're bad, pwned, you know, don't do it. What, what I mean, I'll show you what, I'll show, I'll show you, I'll show you a lot better, just calm it, right, I'll show you what, right, let's say that these are the buttocks, now she wasn't a giant, this is just for the purposes of mine, right, so, you put your hands round the buttocks, right, and maybe start, my fingers are quite spindly, so I can sort of, uh, I start with the index finger, it's a good way to start, you just sort of, and you just go in with that one, and maybe just, you know, keep going with that for a bit, then change fingers, you know, maybe, maybe then change speed, switch your hands over, variety is the spice of life, as they say, you know, just keep doing that and just carry on. I was very good at it, because you should play the harp at college, right, so I was very good. <laughs> anyway, basically, I've got this finger, right, uh, I've got this finger, I've got a witness over here, I've got this finger, uh, I've got 
this finger on the, into the second knuckle, basically, is the best way to put it. I've got this finger here, and uh, there's no easy way of putting this. I came across an object. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean like that. I don't mean like that. No, I don't mean like that. It, was, it, 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 it wasn't something you were supposed to find in your girlfriend. It was foreign. It was like a sombrero or nothing. <laughs> 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 you know, at the time, I wasn't too sure, right? But, uh, it, was, it, was hard, it was hard, and it had edges, and it, 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 like, I thought, this is fucking, this, this is, I mean, don't say anything at the time, that's for Christ's sake, you've got to keep the romantic ambulance going in the room, right? You're trying to, you're fingering your girlfriend's arse off, for Christ's sake. So, <laughs> so I thought, I thought, well, I thought, well, what I've got to do here, what I've got to do is, if I can just, if I can just get some purchase on this fucking thing, right? If I can just, if I can just get a bit of a grip on it, I can just fucking yank this thing out, whatever it is, I can sling it in the corner, behind her back, pick it up later, nobody's embarrassed, right? No? So I've gone in there, right? and really some men can't multitask. Just imagine the stress I was under at this point, right? I'm going, fucking trying to work this fucking thing out, right? And I fucking get the, the, I'll, I'll put it right, right, one quick motion, thought we'll just have this bastard out. One, two, three, <laughs> right? I was about to sling it in the corner until I found out what it was, right? Hanging off my finger was a solid gold Rolex watch. <laughs> I immediately had to... I immediately had to change tact and fucking bring this up right now. I, I wasn't going to leave this one be at this point, right? So I said to the darling, why have you got a solid gold Rolex watch up your ass? And she, she looks at me and goes, happy birthday to me! <laughs> Essentially, the end of the show. It's been. A, I'm going home in, in a couple of days. However, I, if this was, a, it, I, in a way, I wish this was my last show because this would be one of the best shows of the run so far. It's been absolutely wonderful having it. Because I'm at that stage now where I'm like, I, if I hear one more joke, yeah. if one bastard tries to inject mirth and enjoyment into my life, <laughs> I'm going to fucking stab them. <laughs> stage in front of people like you and it's all worthwhile so thank you very much my name is Richard Coffin this has been a wicked night